Good morning, everybody. My name is Grant Fisher. I'm a marketing specialist, creative director, and most importantly, a freelance graphic designer. And this morning, I'm in an especially good mood as I got approved for a new luxury apartment in Oakland, California. Um, I know everyone's moving on out, but that's why I'm moving on in because the price to square foot ratio is just absolutely insane. Um, big open floor plan, which I love. Um, need that. So I'll be filming future videos from there. Um, but more importantly today, I am responding to the criticism of my last video that I uploaded where I showed you all how I make 3D logos in 3D Invigorator. This video made a lot of people upset. I got about um, like four page replies from like multiple people telling me how I am technically wrong and morally wrong. Their criticism is coming from this belief that I should be designing these 3D logos in Adobe Illustrator and not 3D Invigorator and saying the information that I'm teaching is outdated. And all I can say to that is that there is more than one way to skin a freaking cat, people. Um, your method's not wrong. My method's not wrong. I do, however, though, think my method is better, which I will be highlighting later in the video. I just wanna say for people that are saying that my information I'm teaching is useless, I completely disagree because that information is keeping the lights on around here. So on some grown man shit, I am sharing my trade secrets with you that deliver actual results. There were also a lot of comments from people saying how they had a really hard time finding this plugin. And if you want to make it as a freelancer, you've really got to be resourceful. So if finding this plugin is hard for you, um, you got to step up your game a bit. I, I hate to break it to you. On the topic of people saying it's an inconvenience to run an older copy of Adobe Photoshop to use this plugin, all I can say to that is imagine how hard graphic design was in the 80s or 90s just to get basic results. So if your biggest hurdle is moving from one application to another, count yourself lucky. I'd also like to add, you can have two different copy versions of Adobe Photoshop installed and even run both of them simultaneously and they won't conflict with each other. So you could have CS6 open and running 3D Invigorator and then importing your work into the latest copy of Adobe Photoshop. And it's actually worth just having an older copy of Adobe Photoshop because there are a lot of cool abandoned plugins that are no longer supported in modern copies of Photoshop. And some have ways and features of doing things that I haven't seen implemented in modern software. So while you can call them outdated and useless, there's actually a lot we can learn from them and some things from them that I would like to see implemented in software today. Just for example, um, 3D Invigorator has what's called an object styles preset panel. And while it's cool that Illustrator has a materials panel, an object style preset panel would be actually really handy because these object style presets hold information on bevel, extrude, and materials, so you can easily just drag and drop them onto your design elements or text for instant results. That's really helpful as a creative professional because if you're handling three jobs a day to keep the bills paid, you know, time is precious. And while I'm comparing 3D Invigorator to Adobe Illustrator, let's get into that a little more. Now, one big reason I would choose to work in 3D Invigorator versus Adobe Illustrator for 3D is that there is no movement on the XYZ axis. And for those who aren't familiar with movement in a 3D workspace, here's an example of that in Blender. Um, you cannot do this in Adobe Illustrator. So if you have one object that's out of place, good luck to you. Now, I can already imagine what people are going to say next is that, Oh, well, even though you can't move things on the XYZ axis in Illustrator, at least you can export your 3D objects in an OBJ file and then import them into Blender and rearrange them there. And to that, all I can say is the exported OBJs from Illustrator, the topology on them is a nightmare. It is a rat's nest of wireframe. You will spend forever trying to clean up that topology. It is not an effective way to work. Another reason that I will opt for 3D Invigorator over Adobe Illustrator for 3D application is, let's say you have a scene with multiple 3D objects in Adobe Illustrator, and you arranged it all nicely and you like the way it looks, but when you try rotating it, all objects will rotate independently and not in sync with each other. It would be nice if they had a camera mode 
where you can move about the scene and rotate around the object like how 3D Invigorator has, but they don't have that yet. So another reason I would pick 3D Invigorator over Adobe Illustrator is the bevels and lighting, which I find to be a lot more pronounced in 3D Invigorator versus Adobe Illustrator, where I find the bevels to be kind of weak. Um, don't get me wrong, there is a lot of cool variable controls for bevels in Adobe Illustrator that I would love to see implemented in 3D Invigorator. Of course, that's not going to happen as 3D Invigorator is abandonware, but oh well. And just getting the lighting nice and dramatic in 3D Invigorator takes no time at all and it looks great. Um, I kind of find the lighting and reflections in Adobe Illustrator though to be kind of bare bones. Like, it's just kind of like, yeah, it's, it's there, but it's, it doesn't have that dramatic flair that you can get with 3D Invigorator. Now, I actually have a great example of this because for everyone that was telling me how I should do things, I invited them to a challenge and I said, listen, I will send you the logo file I was working with in my last video, and I want you to create what I did in 3D Invigorator, but better in Adobe Illustrator. Of course, all of them shied away from the challenge. No one fully accepted it. One person tried, but then gave up halfway. Um, most people just wrote me another angry letter telling me how wrong I am and how pointless it would be. No one really willing to put their money where their mouth is, but hey, we, at least we got this one comparison um, right here. And it, it just, um, he did kind of a good job. He, did, he didn't do that bad. He didn't do that bad. Um, I, I wouldn't control S this though, and I wouldn't turn it into a client. Um, it's a good try. It's a good try. Um, but it kind of looks like when you see mine and then you see this one, it's like what you order on Wish versus what you get in the mail, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, but alrighty, everybody, I'm going to be capping this video off by reading some of the negative comments I've received. I'm going to be starting with the annoying ones and then moving on to the unhinged ones. First off, we have Paul Tranny. Um, looks like a creative professional, right? Looks like a serious guy. Looks like he knows what he's talking about, but hold on. This is what he had to say. I don't know why this is posted. Um, it's, a, it's showing people how to do something. That's why it's posted. Zaxelworks software is no longer available on current operating systems. Um, I don't know if you actually watched my video. I'm working on Windows 10. The content is pretty much eight years old. Um, no, I made it last week. I'd advise using Illustrator's new 3D and materials panel. It will render everything and even output the 3D model if you want. Yeah, and we earlier already saw how those outputted 3D models topology come out. I'm not really usable. Of course, he leaves the same comment again, but just slightly altered. The plugin is old and no longer being updated for current operating systems, as stated on the Zaxelworks website. Again, works fine on Windows 10 and Windows 11. Don't know what you're talking about. Um, and repeats himself again like a broken record. Personally, you're better off at least with the 3D and materials panel already in Illustrator. Uh, you would think this guy is a professional, right? He's he's out here like having an authoritative voice, repeating himself and whatnot. But I managed to find one graphic he posted on a logo design sub for feedback, and this is it. I mean, so I I, I can't take this guy's that seriously. Can't take him that seriously. This next one is from a guy that started bombarding every commenter on my YouTube page talking like shit about me. I don't have those comments anymore, but he started off by telling me, you know Illustrator supports PBR materials and lighting now, right? It's not the Illustrator 3D from 15 years ago. So I don't get where all this assuming is coming from as I've actually have used the 3D and materials panel in Adobe Illustrator to create 3D print friendly logos for clients. And he goes on to tell me how I learned PS on version four, not CS for it. Again, it doesn't matter how long you've been using Photoshop. It's a matter of what you can do. There's people that get on in a week and are a hundred times better than me. And there's, there's people that have been on for decades and are not even close to professional status. Judging by this guy's profile photo, I can only imagine the kind of unhinged work he does. 
I mean, it's this is like a broken doll's face. I mean, what is what kind of work does this sicko do? This looks like something like a, a profile picture a serial killer would pick out. This next comment is from Toasted Robot ASMR, and he has said, Everyone else has told you how wrong you are. Well, as I just exposed in this video, I'm not wrong. What a moron you are. Thanks. How pointless this video is. And then moved on. Maybe do the same with graphic design, my dude. Um, well, I would take your advice if I didn't have a inbox flooded with potential clients asking for work. So yeah, I mean, I can't imagine with you going around the internet raging at people like this that you would even have anything close to that. Probably the most unhinged comments come from the person that accepted my challenge, and probably they only accepted it because of just how obsessed they were. And I'll just show you how freaking long the comments they write are. Check this out. These massive comments. Look at this. Go on forever. I didn't even read these. Double commenting. Laced full of insults. Personal insults at me. Let me just read you a quick passage from some of it. This is so weird. You are clearly uncomfortable on camera. The video itself was very uncomfortable to watch at times. I'm sorry you watching me work a 3D application made you uncomfortable. I'm so sorry about that. As someone who's married to a psychologist. What the fuck does you being married to a psychologist have to do with anything? You don't inherit their knowledge at all. You're absolutely delusional. Well, he goes on to say, my husband said things that could be taken offensively and I won't repeat them. You're talking to your husband about me? What are you, what are you, what? I have, what? Okay. And then also then goes on to claim my photography is all manipulated stock images. Um, what are you talking about? And says that my website is not believable. What are you, what? Okay. All right, everybody, that's enough of that. I'm gonna be uh, going and enjoying my weekend now.